<coughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's the main party. Wonderful God. And we have to know this wonderful God. He's our creator and he desires to be our father. And he loves us. So, praise the Lord, he wants to give us his life. That's why he created man, the second party. Humanity is a wonderful party. Man, it's really wonderful. A man has a very high destiny it's with God's purpose. We're going to inherit everything that God has created. That's not a small thing. Don't think that uh, we are just saved and what are you going to do in heaven? What are you going to do in heaven? Nothing. How are you going to pass your day in heaven? In eternity even. What are you going to do there? Tell me. Uh -huh. Listening to angelic choir every day. Nobody knows what they're going to do in heaven, right? Actually, you're going to inherit the whole universe, all God's creation, and you're going to rule and manage and take care of everything, just like what God told Adam. You have to rule over everything I've created for you. Manage. Is it easy to be a manager? To manage. Why don't you manage Toronto? You think it's easy to manage the city of Toronto? Okay, let's not talk about the city of Toronto. What about to manage your family? Okay, let's narrow it down. How about managing your own life? Right? Even managing your own bedroom is hard. Don't talk about ruling over the nations if you cannot even manage your own room. How do you manage your own room? You think it's easy. But then when you narrow out, narrow it down to all these situations, you can see, Lord, I need so much salvation to the uttermost. I need to be transformed. We need to be filled with Christ. And, and when are you going to do that? So man, mankind is the second party that is very important for God. The dogs are just your pet, okay? Cats and dogs. And, and of course, all those wild animals is good for the zoo. That's okay. Right? There's not much purpose in them except for us to enjoy Zoo in San Diego is very good. You come to Southern California, visit the zoo. One of the hmm, perhaps best zoo in the world. Right. Mosquitoes, I don't know what their purpose is. <laughs> Maybe food for other insects, I don't know. No purpose. But men, I tell you, you and I, especially the believers today, we have a wonderful, glorious purpose. And we're going to inherit a kingdom. And we're going to rule over the nations. And we're going to manage the whole universe. There are many things yet that we do not know. Because God... Why should God let you know everything? What are you going to do? The more you know, the... what are you going to do with your knowledge? You can only become proud. That's why Paul says knowledge puffs up. Right. So, today to learn to rule, for God to train us, it starts with you. My own life, even my own thoughts. Do I manage my thoughts? Or do I let the enemy shoot the darts of their evil thoughts into my mind? And I cannot even manage it. And I'm even entertaining it? Oh my goodness. 
So, uh, you and I are very important in God's plan. <clears throat> now there is the third party. Of course, the third party belongs to an angelic being. And the fallen one is terrible. He was the archangel before the most wise one, the most beautiful one, right? Uh, Ezekiel uh, and Isaiah, right? Ezekiel 28, Isaiah chapter 14, uh, describes Satan before he was fallen. Yeah. Right. But after he fell, he became the adversary, the enemy of God. He became Satan. Satan is very real. Don't think he's not there. Oh, right after the third chapter, after God created Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden and left them there to manage that little garden. Immediately in chapter 3, the serpent came in. Ah, right in the very beginning, in the start, how about that? So you need to know the serpent. Don't think it's very easy. What does that little serpent do? Right, you know the serpent. Very subtle. The moving of the serpent. Right. And what was his purpose? Uh, to deceive uh, the dogs there? Mm -hmm. To deceive the cat? There's no need. Because man is supposed to rule over them. So you just make man to be fallen, everything will be fallen. So the serpent came to deceive Eve. This is very subtle. Not Adam, but Eve. There's a whole story there to tell. And the main point is to make Eve doubt God. And he started to slander God. Did God say this? And he purposely twisted God's word. And Eve just was taken by surprise. And if you start your conversation with a serpent, you're finished. <laughs> Don't talk to him. Do not entertain him. You are not his equal. No. You are not his equal. So Eve fell into the trap fell into the trap, and don't think you will not fall into the same trap. Then, did God say this? And, yeah. No, then he lied. You will surely not die. God is afraid that if you eat from this tree of knowledge and good and evil, you'll be like him. You will know good and evil, and you'll have the knowledge. And God is afraid that you will be like God. The slander came in, and Eve was, yeah, I never thought about that. Started to think, oh, God's motive is wrong. You start to really think something bad about God and took of that fruit of death, the fruit that would kill her. And so fast, so easy, so easy. I don't think that I, uh, you, you can resist or you can overcome just like this. No. 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 And let's go again to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. <clears throat> I'm sorry, 11. Yeah. Yes. 
Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. <coughs> it's good to know the word again and to read it. Verse 2. I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband. Praise the Lord. Husband, the bride and the bridegroom. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. And this is what the Lord is seeking for with regards to his church. Personally, as the bride. Pure. Right? The church must be pure. If it is not pure, it's no good. It's no good. Right? And here, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So keep it in your heart. What kind of a church do you want to be in Toronto? Is a singing church? A dancing church? <laughs> A sermon church? What kind of a church do we want to build? Right. A famous one? A big one? What is your goal? Right. If we want to be the bride of Christ, what should you do? A capable church? What kind of a church? It must be a pure virgin, Amen. spiritually. Right? You preserve yourself for the Lord. Now, Paul says in verse 3, which is very important, but I fear, and Paul had to, such a care for the church, and he has a fear there, lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, you know, <laughs> Satan is a professional deceiver. <laughs> he has been practicing that profession for at least 6,000 years. At least, not talking about before Adam. He already deceived a lot of even angelic beings. Revelation says one third of the angels followed him. It must be deceived by him, right? Otherwise, how would one third of the angelic being followed him? He is a professional deceiver. That's his profession. Revelation chapter 12 says he's the deceiver of the world. The whole world was deceived by him. Second Corinthians chapter 4 says he's the God of this world. He is even like a God. He blinded the eyes of those who believe not. Why do you think so many people did not believe in God today? Blinded. And who caused them to be blind? The deceiver. You know, after you deceive a person and the person believe your lies, that person becomes blind, just like today in the politics in the USA. You hear lies every day in the news media against Trump, and a lot of people believe, and they hated Trump. For no good reason, they hate this man. All because of lies spread every day, every day, right? Hey. Even in, in Korea, I went to Korea before uh, even the election in November 2016. And I told them Trump is going to win. They all told me, no, 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 the news, oh, no, no, no. The, I said, you wait, Trump is going to win. And when Trump won, one brother wrote me an email, you're right, he won. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to believe the lies, go ahead. 
The law has blinded people, and not only blinded people, caused hatred. There has not been a time when a president was elected and there was so much hatred in the United States. I'm not for politics. I was never for politics, but I don't want to be blinded. I want to know what's going on for the sake of uh, our future. I want to know when the prophetic word of Daniel in chapter 9 will be fulfilled because it concerns the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the whole politics today, my goodness, it's the right word is diabolical. It's the, the word for devil, diabolo, in Greek. Right. The one who is the author of confusion, the father of lies, is even a murderer, the Lord said from the very beginning. All of this terrible word and that's happening today is the opposer, is the adversary, slanderer, liar, is a thief in John chapter 10. He came to rob and to kill. Right. So here, you must know this party. Right. The Chinese saying, there's a Chinese saying, if you want to win a war, you have to know yourself and you have to know your enemies. Now, in the Bible it talks about, oh, I'm sorry, if you don't know yourself and you don't know your enemies, you cannot win a war. You overestimated yourself, you think you're so strong, but you don't realize your enemy is ten times stronger. You want to go out and fight the battle, you're going to lose. Don't overestimate yourself and do not underestimate your enemy. So anybody who doesn't know the devil and what he's doing and what he's up to and what his strategy is, strategies are, uh, you don't stand a chance. You think it's easy to fight a spiritual warfare? You think it's easy? In Ephesians chapter 6, why at the very end? Paul talks about our warfare is not against flesh and blood, not against men, but against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places, the rulers of this world. Against Satan, against the power of darkness, the principalities and powers, you think it's easy to fight against them. So if we do not know them, if we are ignorant of our enemies, then you'll be swallowed up. Right? Eh? Today in the politics, those previous administrations, they, they gave Iran everything. Huh? You give Iran everything to make a nuclear bomb, you're committing suicide. This is stupid. <laughs> Stupidity. Right. I'm not talking about politics. I'm just trying to describe how terrible it is for us as Christians if we do not know what the enemy is doing, what our brother has been sharing there. Uh, in simple terms, and I'm glad he did, because then we understand the tricks. And sometimes his tricks are so simple, just hatred, right? right? Offense and hatred, and you just got angry. Hey, what the Lord says, if you hate a brother, you, you already murdered him, you already killed him. 
How many times have you committed to murder? Mm -hmm. oh, he said, I haven't killed anyone. Well, be careful what you say. There are so many things that we Christians today are ignorant. No wonder we, we fell into the traps everywhere. There are so many traps. And the worst warfare is a guerrilla. Guerrilla, not gorilla. Guerrilla warfare. <laughs> and it turns out to be a gorilla warfare. Because hey, you don't see your enemies. It's good if you see them, right? At least you know where to hit. But if you don't see them, then everything is hidden, you would fall into the trap. So we need to know the third part here, which is God's enemies. And God's enemies is certainly our enemies. And we, the second party, we are the object of attack. They want to destroy us. Because the enemy knows that, hey, God wants to use man to destroy the enemy. And Satan knows if God gain man, and turns them into his children. That will be his end. That is why God is doing his, uh, Satan is doing his best to destroy us. Look what happened to Christianity today. So divided, everybody doing their own thing. Twisting God's word. You know, twisting God's word is not something new. It already started a long time ago in Second Peter, the last chapter. Let's turn to Second Peter, the last chapter. And uh, people are twisting the word of God left and right. <clears throat> Verse 15. And consider that long-suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul. Beloved brother Paul. Uh, like Peter saying, beloved brother Paul. He didn't hate Paul. In Galatians, Paul exposed him to the bones. <laughs> and he was a top apostle, so to speak. <laughs> but, uh, but Paul exposed him, not because Paul hated him, but for the sake of the truth. And Peter did not hold it in his heart. Oh, who do you think you are? I was apostle before you. And, <laughs> right. But he called here our beloved brother Paul. I, I really love this word. Yeah. According to the wisdom given to him. And even Peter had to, to admit that. Every apostle has their gift and the measure of grace. Not to compete with one another, but to supplement, to complement, supplement one another. Speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable People, of course, must be the believers, the Christians, otherwise they will not twist, twist to their own destruction, destruction, as they also do with the rest of the scriptures. That means Satan will use people to twist every verse in the Bible. Yeah. That's his job, but that's Satan's job, is to destroy. 7-Eleven, like our brother said, and 24 hours a day, 7-Eleven. Never stop, never sleep, like what Peter says. He's like a roaring lion going around and never sleep and trying to swallow us. 
What would you do if there are 20 lions running loose in Toronto? Would you let your children play in the playground outside by themselves? Go bicycle riding in the park. <laughs> they, they would love to be in Edward Garden. So just take them there for a stroll. Would you do that? No. Dangerous. But we Christians do not feel we are in danger zone today, do you? Toronto is so nice. Right? Peaceful. What? Isn't it? Well, maybe that's why you moved here to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the spiritual warfare is everywhere. No matter where you go. You go to Fountain Valley, it's the same. Go to Germany, maybe it's worse. <laughs> so, wherever we go, we have to be aware that we are in a spiritual warfare. If we are not aware, you will fall into the trap very easily, without even knowing it. Without even knowing it. The enemy today is so subtle. Right? Of course, after 6,000 years, oh, the, the demon's tactic is definitely more improved than uh, two millennia. Two millennia ago. Yeah. The demon possession today is definitely very much different than in uh, reported in the New Testament where those demon possessed will live in the cemetery and tear out their clothes. Ah, and, you know, like the horror movies. Uh, no, they're not like that. Today they are celebrities. <laughs> In the entertainment business, we are being entertained by demons without knowing it. Many of these so-called celebrities and movie stars and singers, they said, if I'm going to perform without invoking the spirit to come in, I cannot perform. So, who is entertaining you? You think today, is, if a, a person is demon-possessed, he was going crazy, right? Long hair, ah, you know. <laughs> no, they're not like that. They won't be in the cemetery. They'll be in Washington, D.C. And the father of lies is operating everywhere in the ma major media. It's very different today, but if you do not know the strategy of the enemy, you fall into the trap. They are out to influence the whole world. So, Revelation chapter 12, let me read it to you again. Let us just read it. Let us read it. We are naive. We Christians... Not only the people in the world are naive. Uh, anyway, they're atheists, they don't believe in God. Uh, that's why they are so unrighteous. They're fallen. Wars, killing. They have no conscience. Right. They don't like you, they get rid of you. There's a lot of a long list of people being killed. Yeah. Verse 7. <clears throat> and war broke out in heaven after the man child was raptured to the throne, huh? not just to the sky. Michael and his angels. Michael is the present, right? Archangel fought with a dragon. My Satan became a dragon. And that little serpent became a big, mighty, powerful dragon. 
Can you imagine? He also grew. And he also changed his form. He was transformed from a serpent to a dragon with time. How about that? The only people uh, that are not transformed is uh, the church. They are deformed. So the great dragon <clears throat> was cast out. Now it says, verse 9, that serpent of old is the same serpent in the Garden of Eden. But 6,000 years later, he became a dragon. Who would you prefer to fight, a serpent or a dragon? But he became a dragon now, so you're not dealing with a little serpent today. We today are dealing with a great red dragon. How about that? Who is more powerful? The dragon. Yep. The great dragon, the serpent of old, calls a devil. This word devil, you all have to know the meaning, all the bad words in the dictionary. You look into the dictionary, you can see all the bad words. What a devil will do is a liar, is a deceiver, is a slanderer, is a traducer, and oh, whatever it is, he's an opposer, he's a slanderer. He slanders. He lies. Yeah. Calls devil and Satan the adversary, the enemy of God, who deceives the whole world. Can you imagine? Look at the religion, the Islamic religion he created. And how many people in this world and nations are Islamic. Uh, what kind of a religion is that? One of your neighbor told you, right? Well, maybe not all Muslims are criminals, but all criminals are Muslims. That's what his neighbor is an Arab says. Right? Was it your neighbor that told you that, Sharon? Pilates. Oh, you Pilates. Yeah. One of the adult, older Pilates students. Sorry, not your neighbor. Not all Muslims are criminals, but all the criminals there are Muslims. What religion would teach you to blow yourself up to kill other people? And people believe that kind of religion. Would you join that religion? That's how they convert people. History says on one hand with Quran, on the other hand with a sword. You choose what? You, you, you want my Quran or, or, or you want your head? <laughs> If that's the way you preach your religion, that religion cannot be good. And who invented that religion? Mohammed? I tell you, Mohammed was just used by the devil. Right. Don't think Satan is now religious. He is religious. He, he is very good in creating religion. The Mormons, Joseph Smith. So an angel came to Joseph Smith and asked him, oh, dig out something there. There is a special book, and with that book is just the same as the New Testament. It's crazy. The whole world is crazy. He's a deceiver. Deceiver of the whole world. But at this time, in Revelation chapter 12, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. 
And then it says, he is the accuser of the brethren. Verse 10. Right? For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God during the day. I would say, especially at night when you sleep. <laughs> You'll be dreaming about it. Accuser of our brethren day and night. Do you want to be an accuser? Our Lord Jesus Christ is our great heavenly high priest accusing you daily before the Father? No, what does he do before the Father? Intercedes. Now, in the church life, are you a, an accuser of the brethren or are you an intercessor of the brethren? I don't like to accuse the brothers or the sisters. If you see a weakness, or if you see a mistake, or if you see a problem, what do you do? Hmm? I'm not asking you doctrinally, I'm asking you <laughs> experientially, what do you do? Oh, why did you do that? Oh. Oh. <sighs> Why is he still like that, being in the church for how many years now? Ah, <coughs> terrible. Are you an accuser? Or do you go to the Father and say, Father, have mercy on this brother. Save him. Save him. What are we? Are we like the Lord Jesus Christ, an intercessor, or are we like Satan, an accuser? So many times we fall into his trap without knowing it. Right? And our brother was talking about forgiveness. How many times did God forgive you, George? You cannot even count them, right? How many times has someone offended you? You can even count them. Or maybe just even one time is good enough. In our heart, we have a book of offenses. <laughs> Every offense is recorded there. <laughs> Anyone who at certain time offended you and what offense? Oh, well, you wrote it down, recorded, <laughs> written in your heart. Your heart becomes a book, a record of offenses. And after 10 years, you still cannot forget. You still remember. Even if you say, okay, I'll forgive him, but you will not forget. Keep on talking about it. Keep on talking about it. <sighs> Lord Jesus, he is the accuser of the brethren. Our brother put down a verse here in Zechariah chapter 3, right? Satan accused Joshua, the high priest, before God. <clears throat> God was a judge there. And Satan was there standing next to Joshua, accusing Joshua because Joshua has dirty clothes. Right? What did the Lord say, the judge? Who did he rebuke? Joshua! How come you didn't wash your clothes? Why is it you didn't keep your clothes clean? And how did you get your clothes dirty? And how can you serve me with dirty clothes? Did the Lord, did the Lord rebuke Joshua? No. Why not? You are correct. <laughs> Satan makes you do those things and then accuse you before God. And we are so foolish to receive his accusation.
And the Lord says, The Lord who dwells in Jerusalem, who loves Jerusalem, rebuke you, Satan. Yeah. Right. So we need to learn. If there's a problem, the first one you must rebuke is Satan. And tell Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You have the right to say that because it's written in Zechariah chapter 3. The Lord did not rebuke Joshua. What did the Lord tell, said about Joshua? Ask the angel, hey, angel, change his clothes. <laughs> Put on clean clothes, praise the Lord. Right? Change his priestly garment. And put on a clean turban on his head. No problem. Huh. Hallelujah. Learn from that lesson. How about that? Well, Satan was like, you see. Well, what are you going to say to him? You should tell him it's your fault. The Lord will rebuke you. <laughs> and you take the precious blood of the Lord. But... Don't take it lightly. You must repent before God. You must confess, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me. And apply 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yeah. This is wonderful. Then your conscience is free. Then you will not be afraid to approach God, to come back to the Holy of Holies, to restore that wonderful relationship with God. Right. So he is the accuser, terrible accuser. And we don't want to be an accuser. I don't want to be an accuser. And I don't want to listen to accusation. It doesn't mean that I don't believe it. But hey, what are we going to do if we accuse each other in the church life? You accuse me of being too sloppy and I accuse you of being too strict. <laughs> oh, goodness! So, hey, you accuse me of being strict and I accuse you of being so loose. Uh, what are we going to do? And we're going to build up Zion. So we all need to realize, I'm sorry, it's 12. Yeah, there's a lot to say about our enemies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we need to know him. And I want to tell you one thing, what Peter and James says, resist him. Right. Resist him. <laughs> Let's read James. James 4. Yeah. Oh Lord Jesus. What verse is it? <coughs> Seven? Yeah. Yes. Submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Praise the Lord. Then you cleanse your hands, purify your heart. Praise the Lord. Right, we repent. But here, I like this word, resist the devil. How many times and how often when temptation comes, you resist the devil? This is a training. Say no to him. Get lost. Amen. Yep. If Satan gives you a thought, hey, that's not my thought, that's your thought. You have no right. This is, this is my property. I close the door. <laughs> yeah, we need to resist him. Don't be so nice. Come in, come in. <laughs> Take a seat. <laughs> no, 
No, you say no. Right? I like the co oh, the, 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 the billboard that says just say no to those drug users, right? If they come to tempt you, just say no. It's very simple. Everybody can say no. Right? Remember when you were just a little boy, your favorite word is no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but now our no is to Satan. <laughs> say no. It is powerful to say no. You know why? Because your will is given to you by God. God has created us, in us, a thing, an ability called the will. And even God has to respect your will. If you do not believe in God, you said no to him, God can't do anything. He cannot save you. Although he died for you. Because you respect your will. Now, the devil is taking advantage because you don't know you have a will that can say no to him. You say no. Learn to say no. Is it so hard to say no? <laughs> it's not so hard to say no. And I like the word flee. When do you flee? When you're afraid, right? You flee. Otherwise you just walk away. But he's not going to walk away. He flees. Why? Because he's afraid of you. He's afraid. And you have to realize this. This is your right. Amen. You have that power. And within that power, the Lord is dwelling within you. As our brother put that verse, greater is he that is in you than he, Satan, that is in the world. Who is in you? The Lord. Who is greater? In this tug of war, who is greater? Uh, uh, let me tell you, he only has one third of the angels. We have two thirds of the angels <laughs> pulling the tug of war. Who is going to win the tug of war here? Yeah. Don't give the devil so much credit. We are more powerful than we think. That's why he says, put on the whole armor and stand. We can defeat the enemy. And I like that song. We cannot be defeated. Because our Lord is the victor. He already destroyed him who has the power of death, which is the devil. And he already cast off all the principalities and powers. We have a lot of weapons that we don't know and we don't use. We don't use the word of God. We don't use the truth. The weapons of righteousness we don't use. And we don't consecrate ourselves as instrument of righteousness. There are many aspects. But if you don't know how to use it, then the weapons are no good. Don't think if you have a gun, that's good enough. No, you need practice. Every week you have to go practice. Otherwise you won't hit the mark. <laughs> if you bang, you'll be hitting the air. You have to know how to use it. If you don't know how to use it, you don't use it, you, you cannot hit anything. Everything you need practice. Even your thoughts you need to practice. You need to resist the devil. Say, no. Get lost. Get away from me. Right. Chase him out. Right. So we all need to learn how to fight the spiritual battle. Right? And Peter says, there's a roaring lion around. But what do you do? With that roaring lion, if you resist him, he will flee from you. He'll flee from you. Don't be afraid. No. No. So may the Lord help us. Right? We want to prepare for the Lord's coming. This is a very crucial point because someone there, the enemy, is trying to prevent us. Right? And, and here, if you, if you go to school or you're at work, there's no enemy preventing you in your job. But uh, 
to achieve God's plan and God's purpose, my goodness, there's not just one Satan, but a whole horde, army of principalities and powers there trying to stop us, and we don't realize it. This is why there's so much trouble today in the church life. This, this is why so many Christians, they just go anywhere they like and do anything they like, and they, say, they thought it's okay. They're deceived. I hope that we will not be deceived Amen. by the enemy. May the Lord save us and help us to reach the goal. Amen. Right, learn. Learn. Amen. So, praise the Lord. Huh? Amen. Amen. Amen.